All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Rowden, the program director for Art Walla, and I'm pleased to welcome you all to our second talk with fiber artist Christy Kuhn. Christy is a Southern Oregon based fiber artist who is having studied engineering and after a career in woodworking has turned her focus to sculptural composition and handmade felt, which makes her the perfect artist to work on the exquisite gorge project. The Exquisite Gorge Project was developed by Curator of Education at Maryhill Museum of Art, Lou Palermo. This project will feature 13 regional artists and works with communities spanning 220 miles of the Columbia River from the Willamette Confluence to the Snake River Confluence. Each artist will make a piece of work portraying a section of the river and will connect to the next section. This project is inspired by the surrealist art practice, Exquisite Corpse. The entire 66 foot work will come together on August 6th from 10 to four at Mary Hill, where they will be hosting a culminating festival of fiber arts. Throughout the talk, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat and we will do a Q and A at the end. Without further ado, I will turn this over to Christy. Okay, thanks Elizabeth. Hi everyone, small group here, uh, which is great, Lori. Hello, my collaborator, Lori. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's good to be back uh, with you to talk about the project and what's been going on since we met in, I think it was early February. Yeah. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll give you a little bit of what's been going on in the studio and also what's been going on uh, with the project. So uh, since February, uh, in the studio, I moved the studio, which I think I had said in February, I had moved the studio. And so now I'm saying again, I've moved again. Um, so, uh, in February, I expanded to a second location, uh, which was office and showroom space. And then in, uh, I guess, March, I moved again to a larger space, still in the same complex, I brought both of those uh, studios together into one space. So that's where I am now. And uh, you can see there's a lot of light coming in and uh, I can give you, maybe I'll take the computer around if you're interested in seeing the space a little uh, when we finish. Uh, so that happened pretty quickly. And, uh, and then I did a show, I had a juried into a show in Washington, DC. So I uh, made some art and uh, drove to Washington, DC with my partner, Christian Burchard, who is also in the show. And uh, so then five days of driving, five days of show, a week to get back. And, uh, and that was successful and, and good for the most part. Um, and in, in the meantime, I've been working on a piece uh, commission, which is behind me. Uh, I did a commission like this at the end of last year. So the same size and colors and kind of theme, uh, but this is a de different design. And uh, so we've been working on this piece for several months, um, the blue and black. Uh, what happened with that, another thing that happened this year is, um, those of you who know felting uh, and also know a little bit about what I do. So I'm making laminations of materials, wool and silk and wool, and I'm making sheets that I cut into strips. And then I attach those strips into more wool basically and fill in with more wool. Uh, so I have two assistants in the studio and the, the three of us have been working on this piece uh, for weeks. And uh, when it got to the stage of after laying out all of this, which is a needle felting process of needling all these components together before they go to the wet felting stage, um, a few days into the wet felting stage, when, when I was getting really tired of wet felting uh, early in that process, and struggling with it more than I ever have before, I realized that the wool was not felting. Uh, so the black wool that I had, I had a, a, a pre-felt on the bottom, the base layer, 
and then the, the carded wool that was filling in between all those fins was um, basically a superwash wool, which was a mistake from the supplier. Uh, so, so in these months, you know, we had to, to straighten all that out and find new wool and figure out how to uh, salvage what was possible from this uh, layout. Um, and it, it took quite a bit of time, but now you can see uh, the pieces are felted and they're on the panel and they just went onto the panel this morning. So now they will get uh, shaped and um, stitched together so that the leaves, you know, I don't think you can see detail from here, but uh, they're in pieces, large pieces. And so then they'll get stitched together and put onto the panel and a background felt will go in there as well. Uh, so it's very satisfying to finally come to the end of that piece. Um, let's see. Yeah, and that should ship Tuesday. So uh, it, it'll happen. You know, I'm, I've been here every day since I got back from DC trying to get that done. Uh, so that's happening and then other work in the studio. And then, uh, and then here we are sitting inside this frame of the, uh, for the exquisite gorge project. So I'm, I have my chair inside the frame uh, and I have one little, one little thing floating here, just thinking about ideas uh, for this piece on suspension uh, and what might go into it. Um, Let's see. So I want to talk about uh, what we have uh, learned and decisions that have been made about the piece, uh, just some logistical things. Uh, one thing has been transportation. How are we getting this big piece up to Artswalla and then from Artswalla to uh, the Mary Hill Museum for the August uh, event? And I have a, a guy that has moved me in Portland. Uh, when I lived in Portland, I moved a handful of times up there and I would use his business, uh, Oregon Trail Moving, to move my house or move my studio. Well, it turns out uh, Nick is from Ashland where I live now. And over the last year or so, he comes down and sometimes he delivers pieces up to Portland for me or he'll bring things down for me. And so Nick is the one that we're talking with to uh, rent a truck and pick this piece up and bring it to you. So uh, that's feeling pretty positive and uh, like, like he's gonna be the man for that. Uh, the other thing that we had talked about was where is this piece going to be exhibited when it's, uh, in Walla Walla and it was going to originally be inside the gallery and we realized that it wouldn't fit through the door and there's Trisha and Trisha's been the one uh, working on uh, where where it will go and they've found uh, they've arranged for it to sit in the entry of the building so it won't have to go fit through the small doors into the gallery but it can be featured on in the entry of the building i think is that right trisha good so that's great um let's see so then uh since we met last time when we met last time i put a call for uh anyone interested to share information with me about the river, their history with the river, their knowledge of the river, um, thing, anything special uh, that, that I might be able to uh, consider when putting this piece together, especially since I don't live there. I felt like that was a really important thing to get contribution from uh, the local community. So I made a page on the website uh, for anyone to fill out a form and supply information and connect. And, uh, and I had one response. And so I feel like in, it has become a very personal collaboration in a way with Lori White, who is on the Zoom right now, because what Lori did was so spectacular she went out, I think it was like the next day with her husband to the river and took 
uh, photos of the river of where they were and told me about what she was seeing, you know, in great detail, really explained what she was seeing. Uh, you know, if she could get to the water, what the water looked like, uh, the wildlife, the industry. Uh, and for the, for a couple of weeks, Lori and her husband and her dog took trips to the river and shared this with me and, and personal stories and her history with the region. Um, and so that's what I'm going with. Uh, and I, I really love that. And Lori, I thank you so much for what you did um, and what you've shared that way. And, and there are things like things that I wouldn't have known uh, about the, the wheat growing region, about uh, sweet onions and um, the bald eagles, uh, how clear the water is, even with the industry, uh, the pulp mill and the chemical plants that are in the region. Um, so, so I'm considering all of that when I'm putting this together and I don't know how, I still don't really know how this is coming together. Uh, but I'm thinking about, I did think that it was going to be outside for both months. So I have kind of gone in one direction that really uh, takes advantage of daylight. Uh, so that's something that I'm trying to uh, incorporate into this piece, even though, you know, maybe the first month it won't be as visible that way, uh, to be appreciated that way. But um, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's a big piece. Again, I'll just say like, well, there's a lot going on here and this is a big thing to do, but I'm trying to keep it simple and I'm trying to have fun with it because I I want to have fun with it and to really take advantage of this, the space and the movement uh, and what can happen here. Uh, I know it gets windy uh, out in, in the gorge, so it has to have quite a bit of rigidity, but being able to still take advantage of some of those outdoor elements uh, and exposure that we'll have. Uh, so I'm going to look at my sheet here and see, let's, what else? Movement of goods, Lori White. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I have closed that uh, page on my website because I'm just, I have to take what I've got and go with it. And, uh, and then I was also going to say uh, section nine, the section that I butt up to, that I uh, meet, section nine, and I'm section 10. The artist for that has changed to Bonnie Metzler of Portland, who is someone that I know and I would consider you know, a friendly acquaintance. Uh, and uh, Bonnie actually sent her brother to the show in DC. So I got to meet her brother. And it seems like a really sweet connection that that, that happened. And then to find out that she's been selected as the section nine artist, um, it really pleased me. So, um, so that's what I've got for you today. Uh, anyone else? Let me allow people to unmute themselves. Okay, I think. Yeah. This, is, this is Lori. I, I got to tell you, it was really kind of fun. After your last talk, we had this burst of warm weather. I think that was like January or February, and we were just itching to get out. So, but there was nowhere to go. So it was like a great purpose. Like, it's like, I think I have a relationship with this river. I grew up here. I vaguely remember, you know, fishing at Hat Rock Park with my parents, but I was gone so many years. And, you know, you remember those things you did as a kid, but you don't remember how you got there. Or you're, you're not really grounded in it. You just have these memories. So it was really kind of fun. And, and I knew there was a lot of industrial areas and I, I didn't uh, think about how many lovely, wonderful little parks we have between all of that industrial stuff. So, I mean, it was a treat for me too. I had a lot of fun doing that. And then the weather got cold again. I had other places I was going to explore that were part of the river, but I think I covered it pretty good. And what about three or four weekends, we just would go out when we got a chance and, and go over to the river. So, so I thank you, Christy. It was kind of fun. It gave us a great sort of subject matter and way to approach a, a little glimpse of warm weather, which we haven't had for a while again. 
So nice to hear, Lori. Yeah, until your little, I see your pug running in the background until he got sick from the river water, I think is what you said. <laughs> yeah, the, the final thing was it, he, uh, we hadn't taken him out a lot of places with us. So he was really enjoying it. And I was surprised how much he loved the water. And it's kind of funny because I'm a microbiologist and I'm totally enjoying my dog running around and we're looking at all the, there's lots of beaver sign and stuff. And then he got sick and I took him to the vet and I said, well, yeah, you know, he has, uh, he has Giardia and uh, there's a lot of it in the Columbia River and, you know, beavers carry it. And I was like, well, duh, <laughs> but it was still fun. He had a blast. So he just had to take some meds for a while, but it was kind of a funny way to, to finish the whole thing, but, but it was all good. Yeah. Well, Lori, um, I, I hope you feel okay with me putting your name or something about your, what you've shared uh, with this piece when I do a little write up about it. Oh, oh yeah, that's totally fine. I, uh, I'm not going to be around a lot of the first part of July, probably when the piece comes to Walla Walla, but I think where they're talking about putting it, it'll be great. It's the building, not just even the, just the gallery, but the whole building there is nice. So that, that'll be really, really cool. And I, I know that our fiber guild is very interested. Uh, we have the felting group in town. I haven't been as connected with them. They meet usually when I'm at work, um, but I got the notice of this meeting only like a day ago. So I don't know if maybe somehow it, it kind of didn't get out there because I'm pretty sure you'd have other uh, spinners and weavers and felters here today too. We're all excited about it. I'm glad you're excited about it. Also, I was glad that, uh, to know that you hadn't been into the gallery and this is what encouraged you to stop into the gallery. So Arts Wallow would like to know that too, I'm sure. Yeah, actually, I, you know, I've just had my uh, head down working all the time and kind of forgot about the town here too. And so I made it to the uh, uh, Combine Art Collective. And in fact, I bought this and I think that was one of the artists there. It's a nice little uh, uh, piece that I found. And today, I believe Kim is the weaver I met today. I went to um, Cotton Wool too. And they've just, it's, it's interesting how you can be in a place that's, that's as great as Walla Walla. I grew up here and then you just kind of you go on all your other trips and you don't make it downtown. So, so yeah, it's sort of um, the whole thing. I kind of use it as an exercise to get in touch. When you said, you know, relationship with the river, I thought I'm not even really developing a relationship with Walla Walla. So it's been good for me. Good. Sorry. Um, Lori, that piece was actually done by my husband. He's the jeweler. Hey. Yeah. So, and I love that piece. I actually uh, wore it a few times before I let him bring it into the gallery. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's great. Nice connection. Uh, well, Trisha, what do you have to tell us about the gallery? We, uh, there's another artist that is showing in July. What is her name? Her name is uh, Diana Woolley. Mm -hmm, right. She is an encaustic and cold oil and cold wax, wax artist. And she like this painting, can you see that painting? Mm -hmm. Abstracty. She's pretty much an abstract artist. Um, really nice woman uh, typically has pieces that are 36 by 36, 24 by 24, a, a fair amount of kind of big work. Um, mm -hmm. And um, she's excited, she loves your work, she's seen it, she's excited that whatever you might bring in will get worked into whatever she's got. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, if that's still on the docket, we're still very excited about it. And it can be as few pieces or as many pieces as you would, maybe not as many as you <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them, please, or if they're ones that you and Christian have done, yeah. um, that that would, you know, we're open to whatever. So okay. I'll, I can communicate separately, but um, 
I think that would be a really nice connection if you're outside in the corridor and basically the corridor is sort of a round corridor, it makes a, a corner. And so sort of in that corner area, it gets a little wider. That's where I'm sort of envisioning it, but until we really see it and get a sense of its heft. Mm -hmm. I know. They're, they're, everybody, the building owners are really excited about it, the property manager. Good. So it'll we'll make it work. Yeah, thanks for uh, finding that space and uh, getting that worked out for us. Yeah, and you know, the building is really secure. It's, you know, uh, it just, they've got cameras, but you know, they've never really had any issues. Yeah, it's, it's also going to be outside when it's uh, at the museum. So it will be, I, I hope there will be some hands on in there, hands going in. I expect it. Good. He's like this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that people are going to be really curious. Yeah. To touch it. Yeah. So. Well, a great clientele in that part of town too, and a, and a great amount of the visitors and and the people that go through that area are going to really really enjoy it. Yeah. I've gotten a lot of people come into the gallery. They're very excited to see it. So I've okay. had people comment, oh, when is this going to happen? I've been like, oh, it's going to come in in July. So um, we're excited. For it, Christy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Feeling the pressure. Uh, trying to simplify the felting for this because, you know, it could be uh, very complex and time consuming uh, or uh, simple can be better sometimes. So that's where I'm at with it right now. Um, because we're mid-May and we're talking about this going to you for the July 7th opening. So I have six weeks to finish putting it together. Um, quite a bit happening in the meantime, including, um, well, maybe I'll, I'll say there'll be a surprise. Uh, and uh, you'll probably see it on my Instagram early in June. Um, that's it. That's how I get you to sign up to my Instagram. Uh, okay, so I should probably get back to work here. Um, trying to, number one, finish up that one behind me and uh, keep going on this other one. I don't think I'm going to do a lot of reveal of process or, uh, um, you know, uh, anything before it's finished on this piece, but it's possible. I'm kind of excited about the, uh, just revealing the finished piece and the surprise there. So don't expect too much in, in that way. So uh, one question I have, which will, and maybe you've had this conversation with Elizabeth, but um, can we count on you maybe doing a little reveal and maybe a little chat that we could get people to come to when what do you uh like uh well at the opening or you're thinking another zoom talk about it no oh, yeah. at the opening at the opening is uh Ju july 7th well i'm not sure because i had uh, told lou that i would bring it up but now she's arranged for nick to do it and uh, yeah, I don't know right now. Okay. We, uh, I have a large, I have a commission that's about three times as big as the one on the wall behind me uh, to have done by the end of June. And then we're talking about July for you. So yeah, I don't know, it's possible, yeah. Well, let's just keep in touch about that. All right. So, I did 
I did plan on doing something. I just don't know if it'll be in person at this point. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it's not in person, we'll figure that out. But if it is in person, that would be great. So, I know. Yeah. Either way. Thank you. That'd be great. All right. Are there any other questions? No? All right. Well, thank you again, Christy. It was great having you do another talk with us. Thanks, Elizabeth. Good to be back. And uh, thanks again. Big thank you to Lori. Can't say it enough. Happy yeah. to be involved. It was really fun. And I had some ladies uh, from the Felting Group come visit after you started that. I don't know if you knew Flora and Nancy and uh, um, Laura. Laura came down. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And they didn't do any felting while they were here. Okay, you guys, uh, thanks for being here and uh, for all the support. And uh, we'll see you see you again in another six weeks. Yes. Somehow. Okay. Have fun right. creating. Thank you. I can't wait. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.